Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things Plays Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today, I guess we're doing day two of the screwed up timeline in Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, everything went to hell. Um, the game is glitching out now. Apparently, Sayori has ceased to exist. Her character file is missing from the game, so we're starting over without Sayori. And I don't know what the hell's going to happen. All my old saves are gone, so we're going to load this, and we're going to see what happens. Day 2 slash 2 slash B or something. I don't know. Hi again, Burado. Monica is evil. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> uh, nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. But I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Burado. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you, making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh boy, okay. Now, did you see what just happened with Natsuki's character model? Is that because I tried to appeal to her with my last poem? Does the fact that she's going to fall in love with me mean that she's next? Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. <clears throat> You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to come here, just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Whoa, I can't, I can't read, Monica. Uh, you're, you're in my way. Uh, I think it's Natsuki. You certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the classroom. Uh, my, ah, ah. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, Burado. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway... Oh yeah, she's the vice president now. She's, she's taking more an active role. Now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Uh, well, I, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So it only feels right for me to do something like that, if you ask. Wait, I, I, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> if you don't really want to, then forget us anything, I guess. Uh, no, no, it's, it's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Uh, are you sure? I just felt like, well, as the vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. She's so sweet and kind of pretentious. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention. The music's getting weird. It's like changing key, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This, 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 this is... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Okay, so we're going for Natsuki again, right? I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. God damn it. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. So where are we going here? Are we just going to repeat everything exactly the same way? I mean, there are some few little differences here and there. Uh, you looking for something in there? <clears throat> Fucking Monica! <laughs> She never puts my stuff back in the right spot! What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you really, you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. Uh, how did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face, fucking nerd. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, I see. 
There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, oh, much better! Seeing a box set with one miss, one book missing is probably the most in irritating sight in the world. I don't know why I can't read now. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box, of, box set she's admiring. Like I, my eyeballs. Parfait Girls. It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can go do it through the glass on that door. She points at the classroom door. Hey, hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, burado. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book. In fact! Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe. Don't just stand there! Wah! Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Uh, wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Eh, why's that? Uh, I guess it's easier to be closer together like this. Ah! Don't just say that! You'll make me feel weird about it! Natsuki crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. Uh, sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again in inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Oh, uh, are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. Uh, if you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince either of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Ah! Hmm? You don't? Ah! Uh, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. Uh, what do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? <clears throat> Jeez! Uh, sorry. Ah! Like I could never get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up with them without them being all like, Ah! You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch him in the face! Uh, yeah, I, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. My dad would beat the shit out of me if he found this! At least it's safe here in the club. <laughs> Except Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Ugh! I just can't win, can I? Uh, well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am. Reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my other problems. Like the horrible domestic abuse that I suffer at the hands of my raging alcoholic father! Uh, maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? <laughs> <sighs> so? <laughs> Jesus, enough! Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. Uh... Oh, boy. I'm taking a sip of coffee here. All right. All right. Ha! Wow. Time passes. Natsuki is strangely quiet now. 
She may be dead. I can't tell if she's breathing. I glance over at her. Yeah, she looks like she's dead. Looks like she started to fall asleep. Hey, Natsuki! Yeah? Suddenly... Oh, boy. Suddenly, Natsuki collapses straight into me. Hey! Okay. Oh, jeez. Not scary, are you okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Here. Monica reaches in... <laughs> Monica reaches into her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. <laughs> Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. What is she, a fucking dog? I told you not to give... <laughs> she doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. Don't worry, Burado. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. She's a good little puppy. Anyway, why don't we all share poems now? Okay. All right, let's start with Yuri. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. We're going to go through this whole bull honky again. I trust her opinion to be fair. <sighs> Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh! Sorry! I forgot to start speaking. <laughs> Uh, it's it's fine. Don't force yourself. I, I'm not. I, I I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through this. Oh, so it's it's that bad. No! Did did I just raise my voice? Ooh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. Uh, it's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Uh, right. Um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing recognizing new writers is that they're trying to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form the fits to the together. The end result is that both the style and the expressions are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone. She sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques to go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them, building them, getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with back to learning by example, trying new things. It also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Now, Skip can be a little bit biased, though. Biased how? Uh, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. <laughs> After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? So are you going to be the same poems? Seems like it. Ghost Under the Light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time, the last to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past, the light flickers, I flicker back. Yeah, I think that's the same poem. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah, uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Pretty awful. Huh? Uh, that's, that's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. Uh, I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's for our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Uh, are, are you into ghosts, Yuri? Yuri? Yeah, Yuri? Yeah, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Brad. Right? Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. 
if they usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, able to let go of the past and soon to be left with nothing. Uh, that's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought about that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really! Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you become these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. Okay, I gotta go. I'm counting on you, says Yuri. All right, that's enough. It's the same goddamn thing over and over again. Let's go talk to Monica. Hi, Burado. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in, and Monica is fucking creepy. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but I, I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Burado. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like it, Burado. Uh, really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> uh, if you say so. Yeah. If you're interested in Natsuki, then always keep a snack on you. She'll cling to you like a puppy. Because she's a freaking puppy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Natsuki's dad doesn't give her lunch money or leave her any food in the house, so she's in a fussy mood pretty often. And sometimes she just loses all of her strength and shuts down. Like earlier. This is just a guess, but I think she's so small because her malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth. But hey, some guys are into petite girls too, you know. Sorry, just trying to look at the bright side. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. Uh, you sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's let's read it then. Hole in wall. Okay, the same one. Now, wait a minute. This is a continuation, it looks like. <clears throat> so remember, she was looking through a hole, and then really it was someone else looking in at her. So now... But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scram... Scrawling. Playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. Mm-hmm. Again, poking through that fourth wall a little bit, talking about us, the player. Interesting. And things are changing in little ways. Natsuki is apparently a weird dog woman who needs to be fed snacks or else she'll faint. So, what do you think? Uh, it's, it's very free form, if, if that's what you call it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and la lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. Uh, what was the inspiration behind this one? Oh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. She knows she's in a game. Uh, an epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, Natsuki's turn. I don't know if things are going to get crazy or not. Let's take a sip of coffee. <coughs> mm. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. 
Okay, well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Uh, Natsuki rereads my poem. Never mind. I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Yeah? Then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poems if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem to make me go, Ha! Well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you wouldn't have ruined it. I hope you're happy. Uh, so in other words, you're saying you liked it. Train. The train is loud. Urk! Natsuki's retorts gets caught, gets caught in her throat. Ooh, you're so... You just... You, you don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that you don't have to go now to get to the world like you're all self-important. Uh, pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. She likes you, you idiot. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? I showed you mine, now you show me yours, baby. Grr, fine, I guess. Fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Wasn't the other one longer? The eagles can fly one? Anyway. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. I think there was another verse before. Yeah! I told you that you weren't going to like it. Uh, I like it. What? Just be honest! Uh, I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone in high school thinks of writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff, so people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes! Exactly! I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it all fall flat on purpose. It helped bring out the feeling in the last line. Uh, yeah, so you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro! I'm glad you learned something. Uh... Uh, didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew, I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I had anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. Is this, are they going to get the argument again? They gingerly ex exchange sheets of paper sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did, did you say something? So Sayori's not here to, like, tone down this exchange, so it, it'll be interesting. Maybe this will end in a little bit different way. Uh... Oh, that's, that's nothing. Natsuki dismiss dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, uh thanks. Yours is cute. Cute! Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Ah! God damn it. Ah! You mean you have to try hard, that hard, to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I, I do have a couple of suggestions. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Burado did too. So based on that, I'll glad to gladly give you some suggestions of my own. I'm gonna die. First of all... Uh, I excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <laughs> And Burado liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. 
Natsuki suddenly stands up. Are they going to actually get in a knockdown drag out fight? Oh! I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. <laughs> That's not what I... You, you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Burado appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Ah! And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? Uh, no. If I was full of myself... Whoa, her, didn't her boobs just do something? I would deliberately go out of my way to make everyone and everything I do overly cutesy! Ooh. Well, you know what? You, I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Burado started showing up! Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! This doesn't involve you. Uh, taking out your own securities on others like that. You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me? Look who's talking! You wanna be edgy, bitch? Oh, they're getting a little, a little more into it now. Edgy? Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know. Uh, if you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try! Whoa! Be careful or you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri! Oh, my bad! You already do, don't you? Oh! Oh! Did, did, did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on! Let Burado hear everything you really think! I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this! Ah. Suddenly Yuri leans towards me as if she just noticed I was standing- or turns towards me as if she just noticed I was standing there. Burado! She- she's trying to make me look bad! That's not true! She just started it! She started it! Uh, yeah. Uh, oh my- oh, whoa, whoa, hey, come on! Uh, okay, so it's like- I think it was the same dialogue as before, just very quickly. How did I get into this or drag him into it? Who should I side with? Now I have to pick a side. Fuck it. Hello? Um... Hey, Burado. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay. Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us, better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. Oh, she's crying. Poor Natsuki. She quickly runs away. Oh, dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I, I, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth on her desk with her palms on her forehead. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Yuri. I, I didn't mean it. I, I, I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. B -b -b Burado. Please don't hate me. Please! I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Sounds ominous. <sighs> anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. <sighs> Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. 
Uh, you, you can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Uh, 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 well, I'm vice president, so please let me take the responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It's not that. It's, it's not that. I, I just, I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Rado. It would just be embarrassing with you listening. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I, I I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I really appreciate you understanding. Whoa. Okay, so is Monica an agent of evil, or is she just a character in a game who has become self-aware? She knows that she's a character in a game, and now she's trying to affect the outcome of the game. Maybe not for nefarious purposes. Maybe she's just freaking out because she's like, what the hell's going on? She seems evil. Seems very Nurse Ratchety. Let's do our poem for tomorrow, and we will end the episode. We're still going for Natsuki here. Who knows what she's going to be like tomorrow. She seemed rather upset. But we will do cry. No, nope, God damn it. Uh, we will do giggle. Yay. Giggle in the ocean with bubbles and hair and hope. Nope. And cute puppies with 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 lollipops in their 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 fluffy uh 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 uh, uh sticky smiles and sunny vacation milk of 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 kissing kawaii clouds charm the anime we did it all right another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already but we'll have to pick this up in the next episode of stuff and things plays doki doki literature club until next time until we meet again i've been your good friend burado you've been the audience this has been stuff and things I'll see you later.